nothing like the feeling of getting whacked by a salmon while you're slowly reeling in a spinner and you're connected to that lure at the end of your line and that salmon just whacks it, just takes it, and peels off the line, makes an aggressive run. That is why they say the tug is the drug. And you don't get that with other kinds of fishing. You can see your bobber down or your down or your clip pop up or in drift fishing, you know, you might feel your line stop a little bit or twitching, you know, you, 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 you raise the rod tip and you feel some resistance. When you're spinner fishing and you're working that thing through the drift and that fish hits it, you feel it like a lightning bolt right through your arm, all the way through your body. And that is why I love spinner fishing. It is the most fun way to hook salmon and it's not even close. Look, spinner fishing can be as simple as just checking it out there and reeling it in. Sometimes it's that simple. There's some, a pile of coho there in the right water and they're gonna grab it. But sometimes it, it takes real skill to keep the spinner in the right depth, you know, the bottom third of the water column and the blade moving as slowly as possible to create that thump, thump, thump on the end of the rod. It, it, takes, it takes a lot more skill of how fast to reel, how to position the rod tip, where to cast, spinner selection, all of it comes together and it becomes very important for hooking hooking salmon in much more difficult conditions. And this video is gonna to try to break down that art, try to explain some of the conditions, some of the situations. There's no way to cover all of them because it is more of an art form to properly present a, a spinner in, in, all, in all situations. And when done right, an aggressive fish simply can't resist taking a spinner. Look, we call them spinner fish. Not every fish in the in, in, in your river is a spinnerfish, but if you cover water and you and you move through an area, you're going to find spinnerfish. And if you present your spinner correctly, you're gonna get bit. And it's oftentimes the first cast you make. Uh, if you can get that first cast proper, uh, you're you're gonna get bit. And it's just it's just flat awesome. This video is gonna get a little technical. We got some diagrams and we got some some, some examples of, of presenting spinners in different situations, different species of salmon. We also guide a, a spinner noob into his first spinner fish as well. And, and, and hopefully you can see by the end of this video kind of how to go about it, how to do it. And you'll, you'll try it this fall. Uh, you know, as, as coho are entering this, our rivers, as we still got Chinook, we've still got, we've still got pinks in the rivers. All these fish will take spinners. I, I actually have caught my, my largest king salmon back in 2012 on the coast with a properly presented spinner that I made myself. That's right, we're also gonna talk a little bit about making your own spinners and uh, the rods, the rod selection which is super important. It's gotta be matched with spinner selection to, to really get it done uh, when you're spinner. Oh my goodness, did you see that? Uh, fish followed my spinner all the way to my feet and then turned around, yeah. All right, so we're, we'll start with a heavy bodied spinner uh, casting uh, and fishing technique. So you, you make that first, you make that cast a little bit upstream of your position. Uh, on the edge of that drift, maybe a seam or some pocket water you want to hit. So, yeah, come up here. <clears throat> so you, you need to do more of a flip cast because we got all this overhanging trees and, and you know, you don't got to cast it very far. But generally what I'll do is I'll try to cast it slightly up river and every spot's a little different, but you can let it sink for a second and then you can, you can reel it kind of slowly down river this way you can change it to be this way and then reel it in you can also cast you can also cast straight across depending on the water like that let it sink for a few seconds you know start out real start out reeling this way till you want to feel that tip pulsating and then switch it here and just reel real slow and you're just you're just kind of like you're trying to get the spinner to move slowly at the depth that the fish are at you know as it's as the, your line angle is 
uh, coming down with the flow of the river to maybe 12 o'clock directly across from your uh, position where you're standing, uh, you, you really want to have your rod tip pointed low and slightly downstream uh, while you are reeling just enough to get the spinner blade moving. This will require some practice uh, as you want that spinner blade to move, but you don't want to reel too fast where you really pull it out of the out of the spot you're fishing and um, and move it too fast towards your position. This picture here is just it's just depicting if you were to if you were to point your rod upstream instead of downstream, then you, you'll essentially you'll accelerate the swing so your spinner will move up start moving towards your position faster as it swings downstream. You might do this, let's say if you were fishing shallower water with a heavier spinner, you might want to do this. Most of the time though, you want to keep your rod pointing downstream so that it, and use a lighter spinner in the case so that it, it you, you can really take advantage of, of the slot you're trying to fish. So that's kind of the... Just, and you know, once you feel like you've covered the area after just a few casts, then just take a few steps downstream and keep moving. Usually the downstream person will hook, oh, careful. They'll usually hook fish uh, first or more because they're seeing your spinner first, unless you don't cover an area. Robert, I said you got to flip cast it. You can't, you can't uh, do that kind of cast. And you're you're throwing it way harder than you need. That that reel just like spins line out of there. Like you just got to flip it in, and it'll go right in where you want it. There you go. Perfect. And I would reel even slower than that. Oh. And then just keep taking a few steps down. <clears throat> This next picture is uh, you move from that downstream as, it, as the spinner passes you, as your line angle passes you, you move to a more of a neutral position. And this is what's called the swing. Your, your spinner starts to swing across the drift uh, as it's coming closer to your side of the bank, but uh, it is, is remaining downstream as it, as it swings across. And again, here's another alternate uh, alternate scenario. If you were to point your rod downstream, you would force the spinner to swing faster. You may want to do that in certain positions and certain situations, again, where maybe your, your, your spinner is hanging up on the bottom and you don't want to change spinners and you want it to swing through faster and remain above bottom, you may want to point your rod downstream. In most cases, you're going to want to point your rod in neutral position and let it and let it swing. A lot of times you'll get bit on the swing. I think I, I get bit more from Chinook than Coho on the swing here, but but anything can, can happen in a, in a proper spinner cast. So you, you don't, these fish will chase the spinner uh, you don't need to put it right in front of their face for them to, um, but they won't, there's, there's no sense in like, um, covering the same, pounding the same area. Cause if they didn't bite after the first time you did it, they're not going to bite the second time. So you just kind of keep moving to cover, find new water, cover new water. Like I'd want to be putting a spinner right in front of that guy's face. It keeps rolling over there. Oh, very good. I thought this pink one is gonna get pounded. We haven't put a pink coochie through here yet, so that's a that's a good, potentially very good. And it's a little heavier, so it gets down faster. Right, sinks a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. 
So this is a little bit easier water to cover, but just yet, yeah, don't don't go any further. Um, but yeah, flip it up to the like the rock as your first cast, and then then just kind of let it sweep. There you go. See, I point it down real, very slow, very slower than that. Do you feel the tip pulsating with the spinner? There you go. So sometimes if you if you if you pull it if you if you're reeling it too fast, it feels like just like a, um, you don't feel the thud 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 because it's spinning so fast. It's just a dull, you know, pull. Um, you wanna you want it to. And once it once the line it goes by you, then you can move your rod tip to your right, and you reel even slower because it'll swing around. And then, you know, just take a step downstream before your next cast. Yeah, you got him. He's on, he's on. Oh, no, no, no. I saw him come up. That was a nice fish. And then this last position here, uh, the heavy bodied spinner cast is, is the hang down. So uh, you, your, your spinner is done swinging. It's down, it's now directly below you at like a, a, a nine o'clock position. And, and, and oftentimes, this is where uh, where coho will bite. They, they will follow your spinner. Um, Chinook too, but coho to a greater degree. They're going to follow your spinner, follow your spinner, and bite here as you're reeling it back towards your position. Oftentimes, they'll bite within a few feet of the bank. And so it's important not to give up on a cast, even when you're completed, you've completed the swing and, and you're in the hang down and, and just reeling it back to you. Don't reel so fast that you pull it out to, you know, you, you pull it out from the depth that um, the, the coho might be sitting at or, or, or Chinook might be sitting at. When you feel him hit like that, it's pretty awesome because the, you gotta keep moving. He's not gonna bite again. No, nope, you, you gotta find a new biter is the way it works. Sometimes if you rest them long enough, they'll bite again, but not, not right after that. Nice. That's even nicer than the other one we kept. It goes more like the first one. Beautiful fish, another hatchery. Okay, let's talk spinner selection here from right to left. We have a, an assortment of spinners, different sizes, different colors, different styles, and each one of these has an ideal use that really is, is, is well suited for, for using that spinner. And the challenge on the river is to figure it out which one is going to be ideal. If you'll notice that most of these, or really all of them, have hoochies of two different colors. I, I'm a huge fan of green and pink, as you can see, and generally my spinners you know, stay in that range in terms of the colors. Now, there are other colors for the bodies and the blades that I use for different reasons. The general rule is colder water, lower light conditions, you want brighter, shinier, bigger stuff. And the other, the other side of that coin is warmer water, higher light conditions, you want something duller, right? So sometimes, and sometimes you want something in between. So you might go silver body and black blade, right? This one's a little bit on the duller side. It's a brass, duller, kind of chrome, you know, that, that, that's a little off. And then, and then over here on the far right, you've got pretty small profile. This is a size three brass blade pink, you know, a uh, silver silver body. You get the idea. There's kind of a spectrum we're working with here for different purposes. Now, I I have hooked, you know, a, a lot of coho and chinook on every one of these spinners. And it's not always true that clear water will is best with a small spinner. That's uh, just kind of the rule, but you know, with salmon, 
steelhead a lot of times uh, the rules are just a place to start. For example, in a very low water clear situation, I hooked a very nice steelhead on this size 6 Vibrax. Now, I, I throughout the video I talk about heavy body, heavy body technique and light body technique. The Vibrax style spinner is a is a is a light body spinner. This doesn't have a lot of weight to it, but because of the size, it ends up being around the same weight as say this guy over here. This allows me to do the upstream casting technique and I reel from upstream to downstream, which I'll explain a little bit later. Most spinner fishing is done with heavy body spinners, but most spinners sold in the store are light body spinners. So go, go figure. Uh, I, I like North Fork lures. That's where this one and this one are. Uh, these are North Fork lures that, I, I, you know, they make a, a very quality heavy body spinner. I like to buy those, but I also like to buy the spinner parts to assemble them myself. I'm, I need to find a new spinner part supplier because the ones that uh, I used to buy, the River Fisher Spinner, uh, no longer no longer make those components. So, but I still have a lot of their kits left and make quite a few spinners with them still. So, I'll later talk about rod selection as well because your 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 spinner size is matched is your hook size is matched to your spinner size and your rod selection needs to be matched to both take into account hook and blade. The larger the blade, the easier it will be to feel the vibration on the tip of your rod. And the lighter your rod, the easier you'll be able to feel, feel the vibration of, of the, the spinner blade, which is very important for working the spinner properly. With a really slow action, light, ultra light rod, you need a smaller, you want a smaller spinner. And with, uh, with a, if you have a stiffer rod that hopefully still fast action or moderate fast at the at the tip you'll want a larger spinner in that case so you you, you have to you have to match these things together because this large thick wire hook is not going to penetrate the jaw of a salmon even sometimes penetrate enough of a coho if you have an ultralight rod and the same t token if you're using ultralight rod with this guy here you know, you, you might not be able to, that it might not be able to battle a large Chinook on the coast. So you have to keep these things in account. When it comes to most situations, right? We're talking fall, moderate visibility, decent, you know, uh, light conditions or mixed light conditions. I'm probably doing something. I'm probably fishing with one of these spinners here, the, in, in this area here. It's not to say that this one and this one and this one won't work, this is probably the most successful spinner I've made by myself and my own my own parts, which is just a it's a size three body from River Fisher. It's you know sometimes I don't even have a green hooch. I'll just put a green piece of tubing here, and then it's the double uh, you know chartreuse green tape on the inside of the blade. And this works in a variety of conditions. But if I need to get down deeper, I might need to go to a size four. One of these guys. Or, 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 or this larger size five to, to you know, get to the level where the fish are sitting so that the water depth is the other part of that. This will work great in a, you know, say three to six foot feet of water, but if I need to get down to eight or nine feet when there's moderate flow of the river current, this, this is not gonna be a very helpful spinner. So there's, there's as wide a variety of approaches as there are spinner sizes, types, Etc. as there are unique drifts of, of water uh, to fish and, and spinner water comes in all shapes and sizes. So that's just a few thoughts on how to match your spinner selection to the, the, the water you're fishing, the conditions you're fishing, and the species you're fishing. All right, so let's, let's talk about uh, light bodied spinners. So this is your Vibrax, this is your <clears throat> standard light bodied spinners. You know, it's a little different. You cast way more upstream, more like a two o'clock upstream position. You, get, you notice our angler in this picture ha has started um, uh, their cast more downstream uh, so that they can um, they can cover the water. And so you make that cast directly upstream and you start reeling right away because that light body spinner is gonna start sinking. And if you do it right, and you, you know, this allows you to focus on the right retrieve speed uh, in terms of, uh, of how, how fast you reel. If you do it right, you'll, you only have to reel fast enough to get the spinner blade rotating, which you'll feel on the tip of your rod. 
and uh, you don't have to worry about depth as much because it, it'll uh, it'll stay right around that mid lower third part of the water column and uh, and coho will absolutely go nuts for this I, I haven't hooked as many Chinook doing this but this can be really deadly for coho um, and be a great way a uh, great way to get hooked up there. all right so let's talk spinner rod selection what rod are you going to use to throw out these spinners with all your newfound spinner fishing technique very important rod selection and being matched to spinner selection is very important why is it important because you need to feel the thump 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 revolution of of the blade around the spinner to know that it's working at the right speed and that it's spinning this has really helped if you have a rod with a sensitive rod tip usually meaning fast action not always and a larger spinner i'm going to give you a couple examples here of rods that i own personally uh, but i'll also put some links in the description of comparable rods you can purchase on amazon and uh and match it to you know the kind of spinner fishing you're looking to do let's start with this one probably on the heavier side this is a lama glass x86 mts 8.6 or eight eight and a half feet line weight 8 to 17 lure weight and this this is this is uh this medium magnum tip it's a very fast action tip you you can get get an idea of it there and i the smallest spinner i will fish with this rod is probably a size three uh, you're gonna feel it really well on a four or a five or six, and this is this is kind of my king uh, spinner rod. It, it's it's originally designed for for plug fishing, in terms of the the action, the magnum taper on it has a lot of backbone, uh, but it but it really works as a as a larger spinner fishing rod, and uh, and particularly having the backbone to you know take on take take on a chinook salmon and uh, get that to the bank. Now let's look at the other end of the of the spectrum here. And this is your G Loomis GLX Ultra Light, four to eight pound, one sixteenth to three eighths ounce. Uh, this is a fantastic rod for, uh, uh, we'll give, give it a jiggle. You can kind of, when you do this, you can kind of see the action of the rod. Doesn't move quite like the other one, but it, but it is very sensitive because it is it, it is a slow action, ultra light, very light rod, and it, it you know it bends really well. Well, if you you know you can feel a size two spinner, size three spinner really well. It's ideally suited for steelhead, coho, pink salmon, kind of in that category. A, a Chinook's probably a little outmatched for this rod. The other thing is if you throw a size five or size six spinner, the main problem you're gonna run into is that the hook on that spinner is uh, is not gonna penetrate very well into the jaw of, of a salmon because, because the, the rod simply doesn't have the backbone to do it. So I wouldn't go above a size three spinner with this rod for for that reason alone maybe a size four at the very but 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 you're you're kind of pushing it because you need enough backbone to drive that hook home and this rod simply simply doesn't have it it's a fantastic rod i love it but i would not match it with a you know the worst would be like a size six vibrex well i'm going with a different rod if i need if i'm gonna try to throw that that kind of spinner all right now let's look at something let's look at kind of a the, a happy medium here. This is an Okuma Guide Select, and it's a 9.9 rod, medium light, moderate fast, at ML, MF, six to 12 pounds, three to 16 pounds. You know, that's, that's an ideal rod for throwing a number of different spinners. I can get away with a size five spinner with this. It's got enough backbone to drive that hook home. I can still feel a size three, maybe a size two spinner that might be pushing it, but there aren't many scenarios where you want to throw a size two spinner. That's more like, you know, low clear, late summer kind of situation. And, you know, I, I, I've i got, this has got enough backbone to, to handle uh, fighting a Chinook salmon, um, although it's not as ideal as, as the Lama glass that I showed you. So again, I'll, I'll include some, you know, some, some comparable rods you could take a look at. In, in the description here, but just I just want to give you an idea of like rod selection 
and spinner selection. They're meant to work together. If you read my articles on pnwbestlife.com, rod selection, hook selection need to go together. Very, very important. Okay, now let's talk a little bit of basic spinner construction. So usually, I mean, every one of these spinner kits could be slightly different. You're gonna get, but you're gonna get the basic idea from this clip on spinner construction. It's gonna start with a wire, that everything goes on this wire. In the case of these River Fisher kits, there's a split ring that goes on the bottom of the wire, and then the, the, the spinner body goes over the other end of the, of the wire to, to cinch down and you know, secure it around, around the split ring, kind of creates a ring to, to ring connection. And then the, the next thing to go down is usually there's a, a bead in the River Fisher kits it's a small little metal bead sometimes it's a plastic bead but there's usually a bead between the body and the clevis which is the next thing that threads on the wire the quality of the clevis is really important for how easily a spinner blade spins you want the spinner blade to to spin with as little effort as possible as little bit of current or flow or it allows you to reel slower and that keeps it in the strike zone longer that that makes it more deadly more effective it's one of the reasons why wicked lures are such make such great spinners but that's a whole other topic that was last uh the last video i made on the clevis before it goes on the wire of course is going to be the, the spinner blade itself and then i really like the 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 spinner kits from river fisher because they include a small barrel swivel and i put that into the top loop of the wire and then as you can see you need two pairs of pliers to basically hold one of them perfectly steady and then the other one to wrap the wire around it to create that, that loop at the top. And then you can use some wire cutters to, to clip the tag end of the wire off. You're gonna put the hook, you know, attach the, the hook to the split ring. You could put a, a, a swivel, a small barrel swivel in there if you wanted and put the hook on the barrel swivel. Give you a little bit more flexibility to twist, uh, you know, for like coho when they twist a lot. Having a barrel swivel there will keep them hooked sometimes. After that, you can add decorations, some, some spinner tape on the inside of the blade. The inside of the blade is the thing the fish is most, more than likely going to see, especially on the swing or the hang down. And then, you, uh, although sometimes we put them on the top as well. Uh, and, then, and then you've got, you know, uh, either you can put tubing on the hook or, or hoochie. Uh, both, I think, help with, uh, the, with the attraction and, and, and getting bit. So there you go, you've got a full, set of ideas on, spin, on spinner selection, rod selection, spinner construction, how fish a spinner, light body, heavy body spinners, uh, all of the above, and then some drop comments uh, on the video. If you have, uh, if you liked it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, but drop some comments if you've got question, follow-up questions, uh, other tips to add. You know, again, we get a lot of tips on these videos from just other anglers who are part of the community here and, and want to help folks out. And, and uh, always appreciate those kind of comments as well. So yeah, we'll, hopefully I'll see you out there. And hopefully you'll get to experience the absolute uh, epic fishing experience that is getting a, a salmon or a steelhead to bite a spinner while that rod is in your hand, that spinner is, is, is swinging through the drift. Just absolutely incredible. My favorite way to fish. <laughs>